Today's video was made possible by III Audio. III are the makers of the award-winning TMA2 headphones, which now, thanks to the W Plus Link technology, are available as high-quality studio headphones without any strings or in this case, cables attached. With an emphasis on modular design, recyclable, sustainable, and carbon neutral materials, along with ultra low latency uncompressed audio playback, I can personally tell you that the TMA2 Studio Wireless Plus headphones are actually pretty badass. If you want to check them out for yourself or any of the other offerings from III Audio, you could do that with the link down in the description. Howdy doody, buckaroonies. Lately, I've been reading this book, Essentialism, and it made me realize something sort of funny. I kinda hate my home studio. Two of the biggest takeaways for me from this book are actually pretty simple. It's the idea of less but better, and that not all effort gives equal reward. Essentialism more or less explores the ideas and philosophies of minimalism in a broader sense of its application to life, business practices, and pretty much everything else. Not that this video is a review of this book or some kind of preachy video about throwing all of your shit away. I think this is just a book that's really well worth reading, and it's something that really helped me put into perspective what my actual problem with my studio was. A while back, I was re-watching a stream from State Azure, and I found myself oddly jealous of his studio. It wasn't because of the gear he had, and it wasn't really because of the overall design or aesthetic. It's that everything about his studio was set up for making music, and everything about it was perfectly optimized to suit that sort of singular purpose. I think it goes without saying that no two home studios are the same, and obviously just directly copying someone else's setup is probably not going to actually make your setup any better. My home studio is a really weird situation. Not only is it my home office, it's also where I like to just go and hang out, it's where I film all of my videos, and it's also my studio for making music and doing sound design work. With this many degrees of purpose and this insane lack of any kind of work and home separation, it's no wonder why the idea of spending more time in the room I spend nearly all of my time in to begin with started to become a bit of a drag. Nothing about it was working for me anymore. Whether it was making music, working on a client project, chilling out and playing video games, or whatever, it became clear that the problem was just too much shit and not enough purpose. I think Bo Beats actually covered this best in a video a little while ago in that, especially as a YouTuber, you tend to inherit a ton of gear and you're never really able to sit down and work with it because it's always moving on to the next thing. In a way, it's a lot like when you're moving to a new place and you have to sit down and figure out what you want to bring with you. It's kind of funny how, despite how useful things might seem, when you really are forced to sit down and think about it, you find that a lot of it is actually just clutter. As hard as it is to admit, and as painful as it is to rip off the band-aid here, realistically, I probably don't need five different MIDI controllers. I probably don't really need three different wavetable synths. I'm sure I don't actually need eight different hardware sequencers. What I need is the stuff that makes me want to make stuff. I think one of the most important things I've learned throughout this process is that the idea of an Instagram perfect studio is never going to exist in reality. As much as I'd love perfect cabling and a crispy clean desk all the time, that's just not realistic. The process of creating is messy. Things change, there's always a state of motion and chaos, and that's how it should be. But that doesn't mean I can't compromise and make things a little more conducive to a productive form of chaos. Reworking your entire setup is a pretty big task, and it's easy to get overwhelmed thinking of all the things that need done and all the steps that need completed. As excited as I was to redo my studio, I found myself getting pretty frustrated and burnt out before I was able to even really get the process going. One important thing that this book and this whole process taught me is that after a certain point, priorities produce procrastination. Try saying that five times fast. To quote The Incredibles, when everybody is super, no one will be. If you have 15 different top priorities, then everything is a priority, and by that logic, nothing actually is a priority. That's when it became pretty clear to me that I only really had two goals here, to make music and to make videos. And that's a lot more realistic to tackle than the 300 different things I originally had in mind to do to the room. I think my biggest problem with my original setup is that it constantly required me to shuffle out gear and plug in and unplug everything, which just felt useless and like a huge waste of time. The easy solution here was just to make sure that I have the gear that I find most inspiring easily accessible. 
The problem with this was figuring out what actually inspired me to get things done, because over time with this channel and throughout everything else over the years, I've accumulated a pretty big list of gear, and it became this problem of feeling obligated to use things that had just been sitting there collecting dust for a while, rather than using the things that actually made me want to make music. Funny enough, despite having more gear than I really know what to do with, I always seem to gravitate back towards the same handful of things I've been using for years anyway, while the latest and greatest things tend to sit there gathering dust. It's not really that I don't like these things, it's just that most of the time they don't really serve a purpose. One of the things that tends to inspire me most musically is the idea of jamming and just being my own band, swapping out from the drums over to the bass, over to the lead, and so on. My desk was probably the biggest holdup to this, so that meant it was time for just a total overhaul. To free up space, I first went through everything on my desk and set aside what I knew I either hadn't been using or was simply storing on top of my desk. Cable management was probably one of the biggest hurdles to overcome throughout this process. I ended up unplugging all of the cables and rerunning everything and trying to find an efficient compromise between flexibility and permanent cabling to where things looked tidy but were still functional. Because of the locations of the power outlets, the lengths of some cables, and the need to be able to plug and unplug a few of these, it's not necessarily pretty, but I think it's better. If I learned anything undoing and redoing the wiring here, I think it's that sometimes it's not about trying to solve all of your problems, but it's about compromising to try and find the right problems to have. In order to further combat the wiry, cable hell I constantly found myself in, I got some new studio headphones sent over from III. These are actually fully wireless studio headphones with a consistent latency response of only 16 milliseconds, which, all things considered, is basically nothing. I really love that these headphones just let me be in the moment, and I can swap between different synthesizers or different keyboards or even go set up different microphones without having to worry about cables getting tripped over or tangled in each other or caught on something or chewed on by someone who shall remain nameless. The only downside to these for me is that over the wireless connection they only offer 16-bit audio, but of course you could plug them directly into your interface if you want higher quality playback. Then I ordered a monitor arm and some laptop stands from Amazon. Not only did this free up space on my desk, but it made it easier to go through all the crap I was hoarding in my monitor riser and either find a better place for it or toss what wasn't actually essential. The laptop stands meant I could get some of my favorite gear on my desk and actually within reach without needing to constantly shuffle things around, and it made my desk feel a bit more inspiring to sit at rather than just sitting there staring at a screen. Priority number two for this space, of course, is making videos, and this was actually probably the more difficult problem to solve. These days, making videos for the channel isn't really an easy task. There's a lot of stuff that's essential to the process. But I knew I needed to make some changes to make it not only easier or more efficient to produce videos, but also make it more effective at making better videos. My old video setup involved a lot of different lights, audio equipment, tripods, power cables, and all sorts of other clutter that made it just feel sort of claustrophobic and also pretty creatively restrictive. I ended up buying a cheap microphone off of Amazon that I could just plug directly into my camera, cutting myself down to just two lights alongside the practical lights of my studio, and going back to battery power for the camera rig instead of using wired power. Not only did this cheap mic from Amazon sound almost as good as the $800 mic I was using previously, but by swapping this over to a battery-powered mic and a battery-powered camera rig, I found myself having to be a bit more intentional with my video scripting, shooting, and planning. Because there was also significantly less stuff involved in the shooting process, it makes it tremendously easier to be a bit more creative with my shots and be more inspired and playful and ready to shoot when the time comes. Finally, it was time to give everything a good deep clean because, of course, no refresh is complete without scrubbing things down. I shuffled around the decor a bit, I brought in a few new pieces, I put away or got rid of things I no longer liked or wanted, I cleared out the clutter, and I finally went through the junk I'd been holding onto for years to just get it out of the way. A good deep clean for your workspace is always a good idea at least once a year or so. It's also good to just light a candle, open up a window, and try to reset the energy of a space once you've put in the effort to refresh what's actually inside of it. Although this wasn't a complete remodel or anything like that, and things may ultimately not look all that different in here, they do feel different in here, and I think that was what was most important. In the end, there is no perfect home studio. 
If there was, we would all have that same setup. Although it may not be the most exciting task in the world, taking a moment to have a big picture look at what's essential to what you do and putting in the effort it takes to get there might give back exponentially more in the rewards of a better balance. With that, I'd be curious to know what are some steps you've taken to optimize your setup and optimize your workflow, or what are some tips you can share for just making your space more effective? Let me know down in the comments. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And as always, I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome.